Hey y'all, let's take a look at uh, sums of functions. We'll do products in just a minute, but let's look very quickly at the, this old equation here. That is a line, as you probably know. The y-intercept is three, the slope is one. It is a function, right? Pretend it's a babysitting setup. That means you get paid three bucks just to show up no matter how many kids come at all. In other words, this is a dollar amount for y. This is the number of kids. You know, we we'll draw a typical homeschool kid. Yeah. He's crying because somebody fed him gluten. There we go. Okay. And the, the amount of money you make depends on how many kids you babysit. Because you get a dollar per kid plus three bucks, three dollars for showing up. This is a function because you stick in one value for x, you get one value for y, and that's the definition of a function. Okay. Another way of writing this is look at this. You could do something like that. You could do f of x, of course, if you wanted to, or g of x, or whatever. Okay, here's another one. y equals 2x squared minus 5. That's another function. Of course, we know what that is now. Parabola. All right. Um, well, what's this look like? If you write it another way, you could do something like this. g of x is 2x squared minus 5. The reason we separate these by letters sometimes is because if you, if you do y is this and y is that all the time, sometimes it, they can get you know mixed up or confused. This just kind of separates this in our, you know, we can keep them a little bit separate. So anyway, all right. Um, what is h of x plus g of x? That means you would just add those two, you know, together. In other words, you'd add this plus this, you know, shove together the like terms and get yourself an answer, all right? Another way of writing h of x plus g of x, in other words, another way of just indicating you're going to add both of those functions together is writing it like that. So you can just put both of those letters inside one set of parentheses instead of having to do it twice. Okay, that's just a notation, all right? Copy, or excuse me, pause and copy if you need to. All right, let's do a typical example. And they will ask, they'll say, given h of x is, and giving phi of x, by that, just a Greek letter phi. Uh, it's used a lot of times in uh, different uses for it in mathematical operations, but it isn't important. We don't care. If, oh no, that's intimidating. It looks like something I don't know. Eh, no big deal. We don't care what it is. We just care that we're going to add these together, okay? Don't forget your D domain. That means what numbers you're allowed to use. In this one, you're allowed to use real numbers. In this one, you're allowed to use integers. They will say something like, find h plus phi of 2, which means you know, you're going to put in 2 every time you see an x in either one of these equations. Okay. But first off, there's one extra step you have to do on these, and that's to figure out, is 2 a member of both domains? In other words, is 2 a real number? Yes, it is. It's on the number line. Is 2 an integer? Yes, it is. So we can use it. If we can't, it does, it, does it fit them? You don't even do the problem at all because it's, it's not eligible to be used to solve that. So let's find it. h plus phi of 2. Well, the easiest thing to do is just to stick 2 in there. 2 plus 3, 5. Plus, and then 2 goes into here. Five, uh, excuse me, 2 squared is 4 then minus six, and that's an easy arithmetic problem, it's just three, okay? What you could have also done, if you wanted to, is to take this first and add the like terms. In other words, you could have said, I'll do this a different color here, you could have also said, this will be x squared plus x, and then plus three minus six will be minus three. And then you could have done x squared, that'll be two squared, which is four, plus another two, then minus three, which would also give you three as well. To me, it's easier just to go ahead and put in the number each time and then, you know, do the operation you need to do. Okay? Pause it and copy and try this one. We'll try it together. All right. Well, we have h of x is this, g of x is that, and we'll find h plus g of 5. Now, which means we're just going to put in the 5 again every time we see an x and just substitute it in. The only question is, this is what you're allowed to use, reals and negative integers. Is 5 a member of the reals? Yes. Is it a member of the negative integers? No, it's not. So there is no solution to this. You can just go on to the next problem. No way to solve this. All right. Let's do products. That's another uh, kind of a problem we can do with functions. Products of functions. Products, of course, means multiply. And you can pause and copy. All right. They will give you a typical example like this. H of x is that. G of x is that and find hg of negative 4, which means you're going to put in negative 4 every time you see one of these. Okay. First off, we need to check. Is negative 4 a member of both domains? Is it a real number? Yes, it is. Is it a negative integer? Yes, it is. 
we can use it ok the easiest thing i think is to just go ahead and stick this you know in there initially you know let's do it the hard way first ok if we went ahead and went ok it's hg which means a product multiplying let's go ahead and do x squared minus six times x plus three and that's going to give us x squared times x is x cubed ok <clears throat> x squared plus three is or times three is three x squared negative six times x is negative six x and then negative six times positive three is negative eighteen now we stick in the four every time we see it oh brother negative four times negative four times negative four will be sixteen times negative four which is negative sixty four all right plus negative four times negative four is sixteen so sixteen times three is forty eight uh, negative six times negative four is positive twenty four and then minus eighteen <clears throat> all right if you did well, this part is six we can get that out of the way so forty eight plus six is fifty four well fifty four minus sixty four is negative ten there's our answer okay if you want to do it that way you can all right you can also mow the yard with a pair of scissors if you'd like to do that too. But I would, if I were you, just go ahead and stick this negative four right in there right away. Look at this. You got negative four plus three, that's gonna give you negative one, right? Don't forget this is multiplication, not addition, okay? Then we have negative four squared, which is 16, right? Negative four times negative four. 16 minus six is 10 and negative one times 10, lo and behold, is also negative 10. So way easier to do it that way, I think. Okay. All right, let's try another one. Look at this one together. We don't have to copy it yet. You're given f of x is that, g of x is that. You're allowed to use reals and positive integers. Let's find f g of negative 4. Well, is negative 4 a member of both domains? Is negative 4 a real number? Yes, it is. Is it a positive integer? No, it's not. So I guess I'll do it, you know, I don't know, an upside down. I don't know how to do an upside down thing here. And that's an upside down check. So it's not. So there's nothing you can do with this one. You just simply skip it. I know that breaks your heart. Okay. All right. Let's try the uh, three practice problems. So go ahead and pause and try A. Okay. First off, H plus G of five. Does five fit into the reals and the integers? Yes. Which means you can go ahead and solve this. So we're adding this. So we've got five plus one, which will be six. We're gonna add that to five minus one, which is four. So the answer is 10, there you go, okay. All right, try B, pause it. All right, first question is, first thing is notice that's, a, that's multiplication, so don't add those. All right, is negative two a real and a negative integer, integer? And the answer is, of course, yes it is. So easiest thing to do, is to take the negative two and add it to two. Well, I know what the answer is gonna be already. Okay, well anyway, we'll just do it. So we have negative two plus two. What's that equal? So no matter what you multiply this, it doesn't matter if it's a picture of grandma, you know, frying bacon, it's still gonna be zero. But let's just do it for the heck of it, all right? Negative two squared is four minus seven. And it doesn't even matter what's in here at all. So again, that's zero times negative three that's going to be zero. That's the answer. Okay, we'll try one last one. Pause it and copy. Okay, I think I must have copied that down wrong or something. Nope, I guess I did. Okay, so I guess in other words, every time you see an X, you, <laughs> you stick an X in there. Like before, if you every find F of G of X, well, we found h of g of negative 2, which meant every time we see an x, we stick a negative 2 in there. And this is f of g of x. Well, every time you see an x, you stick an x in there. All right? There. Oh, there's nothing there. There we go. Okay. Well, is, is x a real and a positive integer? Let's do this. We're just going to multiply this together. We'll have x plus 6 and x minus 4. And we'll get an x squared minus a 4x plus a 6x minus a 24 add those like terms together not much to it there we go and that's all we need to do okay see you guys next time have a good day